Hey guys, so a couple of years ago, my partner and I decided to tackle 365 activities in 365 days all around New Zealand. It was an epic year and today is day 155. We're going to be hitting the town of Invercargill and we're going to check out what is its most famous brewery. Join me at the end of the video when I'm going to go over all the comments and questions you had the first time we published it. This morning we are leaving the little township of Chuatapuri pretty early because we are making our way toward Invercargill which is the world's southernmost city and the journey to get there takes us through amazing iconic southland landscape i.e. amazing farmlands. There are those lush green rolling hills, heaps of sheep everywhere and the landscape also makes place for amazing sky sceneries. The clouds are so intricate, it is an amazing sight. We have big plans for Southland, we have a super long list of activities and Laura and I just can't wait to get started. And today our activity is to go get drunk at the Invercargill Brewery. The Invercargill Brewery is set in this huge hangar-like building and here we are meeting our guide Kelly who is going to be taking us a full tour of this working brewery down in Invercargill. So to start off with he is telling us about the history of beer making in New Zealand itself because beer making and craft beer is a huge part of the Kiwi culture. He's also telling us about the humble beginnings of the Invercargill Brewery, which only really started in 1999, but since then they have grown so big that they even do craft beer contracts for big brands around New Zealand like Yeasty Boys. As well as all that, Kelly is also going through the beer making process. One of the main reasons why craft beer are so different than mainstream beers is that they usually have much less sugar. And to achieve such a result, it usually takes over four weeks for the beer to kind of stay and ferment it and do a couple of things that I'm not 100% sure about what, but uh, it takes four weeks to do that. So this is why usually craft beers come in much smaller runs than mainstream beers. I really like the whole casual feel of this tour. We're just walking around this working brewery with Kelly and just stop at the station of every single worker asking them what they're doing. And it's a really different and hands-on way to learn about the whole brewing process. It's super cool. And we really get to learn about the entire process of beer making, even including the bottling process, which apparently is quite a tricky one and gets a lot of refuse. We see crates and crates and crates filled of bottles which have completely lopsided stickers and are absolutely unsellable. But not long after that comes my favorite part of any brewery tour. And it happens when the guide usually says, Are you thirsty? We're following Kelly into the tasting room of the Invercargill Brewery where they have a really cool setup here. They have around 20 different fill your own bottle taps. So people can come in here and fill their own bottles. It's a good eco-friendly way of doing things. And we're using these taps to choose our very own tasters for today. There's heaps of beer, there's honey infused, coffee infused, tobacco infused and even some seasonal beers or as Laura would say with a French accent Saison <laughs> Each of us is gonna get six tasters, we get to choose our own so we actually pick the thing that we think we're gonna love the most and then we gather around the table and chat about how much we love those craft beers there really is a huge variety of craft beer here at the Invercargill Brewery and Kelling us is showing us the different ideas behind each beer we're tasting, it's telling us what sort of flavours to expect as well and showing us the bottles they're sold in too. And from there we're sort of just casually hanging out and meeting some cool new people. It's really awesome the different people that we get to meet on these tours as well. That was such an awesome day, we're leaving super happy, but join us tomorrow because we are going to be meeting a three-eyed lizard. Yes, you heard me right. And she's chugging the beer like never before. She's like going crazy, she's wearing chonk. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there is a joke from an episode of Saturday Night Live a year ago, if anyone catches it. <laughs> 
All right, guys, so I hope that you like this video of us getting tipsy. I don't know if we did justice to this uh, to this brewery too, but, you know, we did hang out quite a few, uh, quite a bit over there and I have a few extra, which we didn't mind whatsoever. So in the comment section that we had, uh, you know, when we first published this video, we had Why in the World that says he wanted to go there, but he didn't have enough time. He had to drive to from Bluff to Tiana. And uh, he says, why to Jay does a 14 day trip and uh, we'd get to do a 365 day trip. So he's a little bit jealous. But yeah, check out his channel. It's uh, why in the world. It's, uh, it's a cool YouTube channel uh, of traveling in New Zealand as well. All right. We have Cairo M that says Ushuaia is the world's most southern city. And that relates to a comment from Ross Finlayson, which says, in the interest of accuracy, Invercargill is not the world's southernmost city. According to Wikipedia, Invercargill is 46.4 degrees south and has a population of 54,800. However, Ushuaia in Argentina is at 54.8 degrees south and has a population of 569 uh, thousand uh, fifty six point nine thousand um, popula population so yeah Laura was wrong in her introduction of this video that's why I just cut it and you guys don't know why I'm talking about that so in short when we first published the video we had a different introduction to this um, to those this style of video and Laura mentioned in Vercargill as the southernmost city in the world and yeah we got that wrong sorry about that but you know we got to correct all that and all that on the website as well so uh, if you don't know we also run a website called nzpocketguide.com it's new zealand's largest travel guide it's it's a fun place to hang out and um and you know plan your trip to new zealand and also we do live sessions every single sunday at 8 a.m new zealand time where we get to interact with you guys and uh, go over all the stuff that you think we're wrong about and also answer all your questions about traveling in new zealand so overall plenty of way to interact with us if you wish to do so you can also find us on social media at nzpocketguy.com if you're on the chat with us even further so this channel is as much ours as it is yours so make sure to make it yours by chatting with us and putting your footprint onto our channel in the meantime you guys have a lovely day we we'll see you tomorrow where we're going to keep on exploring Invercargill and all the stuff that it has to offer bye bye